Hello there, welcome back to the review space, and today I'm going to talk about my top 10 worst games in my collection. That's right, the top 10 worst games that I currently own in my current library of games that I still have. Alright, number 1, Crackdown 2. This one is for the th Xbox 360 and uh, came out in 2010. That's right, this was basically an exclusive for the 360, the follow-up to the uh, original 2007 Crackdown game, which was actually, it, that one was fairly critically acclaimed, and it was kind of a surprise hit. People enjoyed it initially. The problem with Crackdown 2 is pretty much everything else. Not much changed from the original 07 game. It's like, okay, what has actually changed in this game? The graphics haven't really improved. Everything, it's like the same exact engine, the same exact freaking world, pretty much. There's this pointless orb collecting. All you're doing is really just collecting these orbs, and... I mean, it's not really the worst thing in the world, but after, like, a while, it really does get repetitive, and it just seems like that's all you're doing. You're pointlessly collecting a bunch of orbs around these buildings, and... At the beginning, it might seem kind of, oh, okay... It's, it's a bit of a exercising type of uh, gameplay, and it's kind of uh, cool to jump around these tall buildings to creatively look for these orbs, but at the end of the day, you're still just collecting a bunch of stinking orbs. Really, there's a lackluster narrative here, too. The storytelling isn't really anything special. As a matter of fact, the, the crappy campaign is very, very empty. It's a crappy storyline. The vehicle controls, you can actually... I remember you can go inside the vehicles and you can drive around a little bit, but it just has no special oomph to it. it the exploration itself, the ex, you know, exploring this city, it just feels really bland, it feels very repetitive, and after a while, you just kind of have no purpose. It feels like you have no purpose except to have these random little shootouts once in a while, you're doing a lot of jumping from building to building, and that's pretty much it. Crackdown 2, not a good game at all. I think it's absolutely uh, disappointing for what it is and what it could have been for the Xbox 360. Crackdown 2 ultimately isn't a good game. Alright, number 2 is Marvel Nemesis Rise of the Imperfects. Ugh came out in 2005, way back in the mid-2000s for the, uh, this one I got the Xbox version, but this was like a multi-plat, it came out on everything at the time. The problem with this game is very simple, one huge glaring problem, there's too many nighttime stages, basically, which is horrendous, because it makes the graphics look incredibly dreary, and it's just way too dark to see clearly, and, and make out the... You know, you can't enjoy the graphics. It just looks so terrible because it's so dark and the lighting is so dark. The controls feel exactly the same for each of the characters and they every single character in this game has the same exact style, the same buttons. They're all just basically palette swaps of each other pretty much and the gameplay itself just gets redundant after like 20 minutes. It's uh, nothing special. You, you can unlock all these different characters, but the unlocking itself is very tedious. You have to keep playing the game and continuously unlock the characters. And the problem is that half of them aren't even that interesting. And aside from the Marvel characters, they look pretty cool. And it's like, okay, cool, comic book characters, sweet. The rest of them aren't that special. They don't really stand out that much. The story mode is just this generic, you know, beat em up kind of repetitive game, and the environments aren't anything. It's just really bland, and. Ugh, what, what a way to kind of bury the Marvel license. There's way better Marvel based games out there. Even the ones from like the 90s, you know, the beat em ups from that time. This one isn't anything special. This one actually pretty damn terrible for a mid 2000s uh, game. It sucked. Number three, coming in at number three, is Yu-Gi-Oh! The False Bound Kingdom. Ugh, The False Bound. This game came out on the GameCube. I believe it's an exclusive, only for the GameCube. Came out in 2003, at the height 
of the Yu-Gi-Oh uh, Western, you know, profitability and popularity. You know, that's when the anime was really kind of popular. And God, this was a long time ago. The graphics look really outdated in this game. It just it's incredibly terrible looking graphics. It could have been on the N64 and it would have looked mediocre on that. The gameplay and the RPG mechanics is incredibly basic. It's actually really monotonous too. Very monotonous. It gets really tiring after about an hour of playing it. Trying to kind of sit through this game is... It just has a very dated feel to it. You know, when you're getting around and you're trying to progress through the stages, the, the environment, it just takes forever to move around and it has this very late 80s, early 90s, 16-bit uh, structure to it, the, the RPG structure. It's incredibly boring. And it's overall, it just feels like a cheap exclusive that could have been way better on the GameCube. And they try to, you know, even on the cover of the, the game, they try to sucker you in by offering, oh, you know, special free cards and limited edition free cards inside and all that crap. It's just a gimmick, really, at the end of the day. Could have been so much better. This game sucks terribly. Coming in at number four, Rainbow Six Vegas. Ah, oh, God, this game sucks. It's on the PSP, of course. This, this is the PSP version, though, specifically on the PSP. Uh, came out in 06. This was a multi-plat. Now, I enjoyed Rainbow Six Vegas on the other consoles, on the main, you know, console versions. Those are pretty damn good. But this one is a piece of absolute shit. It's gotta be one of the worst handheld ports I've ever seen, especially from the 7th generation. Uh, one of the main problems is that it's got ba basically incredibly crappy graphics for the PSP. Even for PSP standards, it just is not impressive looking. There's a lot of faults with the graphics it looks so unfinished and the skins and the, the designs of the building look so empty and so goddamn i mean it looks like shit really horrendous controls of course the controls suck so bad the aiming system is practically broken the psp has this awkward you know left analog and it's very very pointless it's like useless to use you, you can't really even have a proper first person shooter experience with this and you don't have a right right analog the whole thing feels so broken and bogged down the console versions feel and play and look a hundred times superior and it's just those versions it's just way more entertaining on the consoles than on the PSP it was a mistake to release this on the PSP like this and I mean, there's not a lot of enemies either on the screen. Uh, on you know, every time you're facing enemies, one or maybe a two at the most will come out and, and fight you. And I don't know. It's just it just feels so goddamn empty. It sucks. Coming in at number five, we got Forza Motorsport 2. Ah, uh, Forza. This one came out in 07 for the 360. Yeah, I mean, this is a 360 game, they finally got a Forza game, and one of the most boring games and tedious racing games I've ever played. You know, up to this point, I never really experienced the Forza series, I've always wanted to try it. And then, so when this dropped in 07, I was like really excited, oh, okay, let me try this for the first time. And it turned out to be just a typical uh, Gran Turismo type of simulation racing uh, garbage. Yeah, it just is not... It's not a good game. I don't understand the appeal of these simulation things. I, I mean, okay, it's got a niche audience. Fine. There's a few people that like it, but the fact that it's got all these good reviews, you know, it got all these positive reviews, and it's just a disappointing, you know, slow, boring game. And the main problem is that the gameplay for these uh, simulation type type of games are really pathetic it's it feels almost like it's just testing you all the time you're not allowed to have fun it's not really fun it just is a real of hyper realistic type of game that isn't it's just lacking entertainment the entertainment is that it's realistic but the problem is that the realistic aspect of it is just so fucking boring it's 
I don't know, it should have a sticker on the cover that says, uh, Buyer Beware. This is a boring simulator. It's, it's only for a niche crowd. Sucks. Coming in at number six. Number six, here we go. SOCOM Fireteam Bravo 2. And this one came out, on, again, another PSP shooter. Oh my god. Came out in 06. This was a sequel. I think I also had the, the first one. But uh, I was never a big SOCOM fan. Uh, even on the consoles on the PS2, I was never a fan of those ones. I just felt like the controls weren't the best. But this one in particular sucked really badly because the controls are fucking pretty much broken. It feels cumbersome at the very least. The aiming and the, t the you know the targeting gets incredibly slow. It just it feels so slow. It feels so sluggish. Aiming sucks in these games. In these PSP shooter type of experiences. It just doesn't work on the PSP, most of them. There's a few here and there that's okay, but the blatant, you know, lack of a right analog makes the gameplay so awkward, and the more you play it, after like 20-30 minutes, it's so un- it pretty much is unplayable. You don't wanna- you don't wanna fucking try it anymore. So come Far Team Bravo 2, this is a waste of game space. <laughs> All right, number seven. Let's go with number seven. Automedius, excellent. Came out in uh, 2011 for the 360. And I, I love the cover of this game. It looks absolutely great. But this is a perfect example of never judge a book by its cover or never judge a game by its cover because you got this sexy, beautiful anime chick you got all these girls in the front, and it's very colorful and anime looking. It looks so nice and inviting, and it's, it looks so cool. And they're obviously trying to use sex appeal to try to sell the game. And I gotta admit, that's part of the reason why I bought this. I've never heard of the Automedius uh, games before, but uh, I picked it up. It was only 10 bucks. The reality is that this game is a very generic uh, scrolling shooter. So it's one of those shmups or shoot 'em ups, and it's just unimpressive to me. Yeah, the graphics are very unimpressive. The visuals are very outdated, and it, it, this could have been okay. It could have looked all right on the Sega Dreamcast from the late 1990s, but for a game that came out in 20 fucking 11, I, I understand if this would have been, you know, a, a PSN or a Xbox 360 Live type of download, but. I don't even think it deserves a a retail media copy, an actual disc, you know, retail copy. The stages get far too difficult after a while, and that's fine when it comes to shoot 'em ups. But the problem is, from what I everything as I've seen, there's no saving system. I played the game for an hour straight, and I don't think you can save it. You have to beat the game in a single sitting, so you have to continuously play it and. Especially if you don't have multiplayer, you don't have uh, other people to play this with. I don't know if they want to. You got, you need help. You need as much help to do to beat the stuff. And I don't know. It just isn't. It's not as sexy as the cover. The, the cover is the best part of the game, basically. That's all there is. That's the reality. And even on the back, you know, they show. They try to show like these sexy characters. Ah, uh, this game is incredibly forgettable and not a good game. All right, let's go with number eight. Oh god, okay, Ghost Recon 2 Advanced Warfighter. That's a mouthful to Tom, actually Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon 2 Advanced Warfighter. Uh, this one came out in 07. Uh, got the PSP version, and of course it's the PSP. It's a shooter. It sucks. It's the worst port out of all these. Uh, uh, it's because it's basically a multiplayer. It came out on everything, just like with Rainbow Six and all that, but. It's another shitty handheld PSP game. Because, of course, it plays the worst because of the PSP's unplayable controls, the terrible left analog. The enemies are incredibly uh, pathetic. You know, they're not the, the smartest CPU out there, but again, the gameplay and the graphics, all of it, the entire presentation of the game is so. 
it just feels bogged down. It just feels such a cheap, third-rate copy of Advanced Warfighter. Like, it, it, it's the crappiest Ghost Recon experience out of anything you can play. Very, cumbers very cumbersome that at the end of the day, you'll just want to play the actual console versions with the proper controllers and everything instead. It really sucks, too. Uh, it would have been so much better if at least you could maybe hook up a fucking, like, controller to the PSP. Uh, I don't know. And I played, you know, there are better third-person shooters out there on the PSP, like the, the Resistance game. I thought that was okay. Not too bad, but this one is just an absolute pile of shit. Okay, number nine. Here we go. Brute Force. Oh god, it came out on the Xbox, a, an exclusive for the Xbox, way back in 2003. Yeah, this was a shitty Xbox exclusive. It was a shooter, it felt so bore. This game was just boring. Very dull, compared, especially compared to the older games like uh, Halo. Halo was a fucking awesome sci-fi shooter. And it uh, came out a couple of years earlier. Even air, something like Area 51, which came a little bit later, but the same theme of, you know, shooting aliens and shit. I don't know what it is. Brute Force? Some people say it's underrated. Oh, it's underrated. Nah, this game is not popular for a reason. The environments are very mediocre looking. They don't stand out. They look so bland. Very repetitive in terms of the designs of uh, the fucking graphics. The gameplay is about as basic as you can get. You know, for a third-person shooter type of experience. Uh, this could have been released in the mid-90s on, you know, a Windows 95, and it would have played just the same. It just doesn't feel, for its time in 2003, like a next-gen, you know, oh shit, this is so, you know, like, you gotta have the Xbox. The story isn't compelling and interesting. It's just, it's got all these... Cr <laughs> stereotypical characters, you know, I mean, it, it just sucks. It sucks. It's a cheap C-rate version of, like, a Star, Star Wars type of uh, experience. And coming in at number 10, Fuel for the Xbox 360, and it came out on the other uh, systems, too, but uh, it came out in 2009. I don't know what to say about Fuel. You know, on one hand, uh, it does play relatively all right and the graphics for at least half the time look decent but I don't, the idea is cool it's an open world racing game but there's one big flaw with the whole thing and there's just this giant elephant in the room problem is the night stages the thing fucking switches from day to night constantly you know it, all, all the, I don't know how to turn it off. I, I don't know if you can turn it off. I don't think you can. I wish you could. And so otherwise, like during the daytime, you're driving around this giant island and it looks pretty pretty good. The environments look all right. But it switches to nighttime way too often and everything is way too fucking dark. You can't see anything. Uh, much like some of the other games I've complained about where it's like it's too dark and you can't see much because the lighting is terrible. This is especially exaggerated with fuel because number one, most of the large spacious area is situated in the middle of like the woods, this island basically. You got all these trees and you got the rough terrain like rocks and, and desert areas and a lot of fucking rough terrain areas and there's very little lighting except for the moon you got this moon hanging over you and everything looks so dark dark grayish and they all kind of look you know they blend together and so you can't make out the awesome environments that otherwise you could see in the daytime and half the time it's like this and you can't fucking stop it it's always switching between night and day the daytime is good, but the nighttime just destroys it. It just ruins the whole fucking thing. Because you want to obviously drive around this massive space of, of land, and you want to keep racing with other people, or I see other AI on the fucking, in the game. It's just very difficult to appreciate.
appreciate or enjoy this game. Very disappointing, man. Fuck. It could have been so much better. They sh they gotta stop fucking with uh, you gotta stop with this nighttime stuff. Some games can get away with it. You know, like GTA is okay, Grand Theft Auto, or those open world uh, third person shooter type of games, because most of them are set in the city. So you got this giant city, and there's a lot of lights anyway. So even if it's nighttime, there's a lot of neon lights and city lights and street lights that still, you know, obviously make it visually uh, appealing. With fuel, it's just, there's not, it's just a fucking moon at nighttime, and that's the big problem. This could have been so much better. I don't know. It sucks. It, it's a shitty experience for me. It's... The, the worst part is the disappointment that you get, because some of these games are, in fact, otherwise would have been good with either proper controls or proper fucking graphics. And it's those, like, little fucking flaws that destroy the experience. You know, it could have been fixed. It could have been, you know, left out. You know, you take out the nighttime shit and it could have been perfectly fine, but they just, they fucking ruin it. And that's pretty much it. That's my top 10 worst games in my co current collection and basically the ones that I still own. You know, I've owned some pretty bad ones, but I've gotten rid of a lot of them, especially the PS2 side of it. But that's pretty much it for the top 10 worst games I currently have in my library. Thanks for watching the review space, the most underrated channel on YouTube. For more videos, check out youtube.com/backslash/the-review-space.